Hello people, in this video we will look at the synthesis of thyroid hormone. So basically the thyroid hormones means what the T3 and the T4, that's the triiodothyronine and T4 thyroxine. So basically how are these prepared and released? So basically you know that the hypothalamus releases the thyroid releasing hormone. The anterior pituitary in response to thyroid releasing hormone releases thyroid stimulating hormone which stimulates the thyroid gland to release T3 and T4. T3 and T4 are released by the follicular cells of the thyroid gland. The parafollicular cells release calcitonin which is not covered here. So let us move on to the exact preparation and release of uh, the thyroid hormone. So we will be using this diagram so pay attention here. So there are five steps here. Iodide trapping. Okay, the iodide is trapped here. This is the blood vessel guys. This is the blood vessel. This is the thyroid cell. This is the follicular cell. And this is the colloidal space. Okay, follicular lumen, the colloidal space. So basically it is picking up iodine from here and it is going to put it here into the colloidal space, the follicular lumen. And here the T3 and T4 are prepared and again it is released back to the blood. Is this clear? So this much concept you have understood, right? So let me repeat. Guys, we are discussing what today? The preparation and release of thyroid hormone. Okay. So look at the steps here. First of all, you understood what these are, right? This is the blood vessel. This is the thyroid follicular cell. This is the follicular lumen. From here, iodine is picked up. The iodide ions are picked up. And here it is sent to the colloidal space where it is um, made. T3 and T4 are made and T3 and T4 are released back into the blood. This much overall concept you have understood, right? So basically here what is there? Iodide ions are there. Iodide ions are going to be trapped. Okay. Then they are going to be sent into this follicular space. Follicular lumen. Here there is going to be oxidation, iodination, coupling etc. And then the hormone is released. Here what and all is there? Oxidation, iodination, coupling. Anyways don't break your head too much if you didn't understand. Let us look at the first step here. The first step is iodide trapping. So iodide trapping means by using active transport that is using ATP the iodide iodides ions iodide ions are taken into follicular cells and this is known as iodide trapping okay this takes place by basement membrane protein which is called as a sodium iodine sympoter NIS sodium iodine sympoter NIS so using energy active transport is going to happen of this iodide ions into the follicular cell who is going to help here? Sodium iodide sympoter. Sodium iodide sympoter. Okay, this is known as iodine trapping. So here what is used? Here ATP is used. So you should put an ATP here. Hold on. So guys, pay attention here. An ATP has been brought in. You can see ATP here. Right? So active transport is going to happen of the iodide ions into the follicular cells. Okay? Now into the follicular lumen, this iodide ion will be released. Okay. So iodide ion, what will happen? This iodide ion using this pendrin transporter, it is coming into the follicular lumen. This much you understood. Using this pendrin, it is coming into the follicular lumen. Here it is going to be oxidized to iodine. The enzyme, the enzyme that is going to do this is thyroperoxidase. Guys, are you able to see? Thyroperoxidase is oxidizing iodide into iodine. Okay. At the same time, from the follicular cell, uh, it is the follicular cell is synthesizing this Tg. What is this Tg? It is a thyroglobulin. So thyroglobulin is also released into this follicular lumen. So two things are entering the follicular lumen. What in all are entering the follicular lumen, guys? Iodide, which is converted into iodine, and also the thyroglobulin, which is synthesized by this follicular cells. You can see here. Using the mRNA, the thyroglobulin is synthesized and this thyroglobulin has a lot of tyrosine residues. It is entering the follicular lumen. Okay. Now what is going to happen? So guys, did you pay attention to the enzyme name here? Thyroperoxidase. Most of the places, whatever works is thyroperoxidase. Okay. Now let us move on to the next step. That is the iodination. Okay. Iodination. Who is getting iodinated? Thyroglobulin. So the thyroglobulin is going to get iodinated. Look at this part now. So here you have this uh, thyroglobulin. What is this thyro? This thing? This is thyroglobulin. It has a lot of tyrosine residues. You can see that. Now, using the same enzyme, that is the thyroperoxidase, and using the iodine, the tyrosine, the tyrosine residues are going to get iodinated by use of this enzyme thyroperoxidase. So this tyrosine will become monoiodo, 
mono iodo what tyrosine if it picks up two iodine it will become di iodo tyrosine so what and all happened here are you able to understand guys it's pretty clear right hopefully uh how's it going it's fine you had a thyroglobulin molecule with with lot of tyrosine residues this uh, tyrosine is getting iodinated right iodination is happening if it picks up one iodine it becomes a mono iodo tyrosine if it becomes if it picks up two iodines it is becoming di iodo tyrosine so mono iodo tyrosine di iodo tyrosine so this is the iodination io d nation iodination of what of the thyroglobulin very good then what is going to happen coupling coupling is the next step so all these things will start coupling they will start joining together like a dit and a dit join together to give a t4 mit and a dit join together couple together to give a t3 again a dit and a dit join to give a t4 so now you can see how this thyroglobulin has completely changed to make a t3 t4 etc right so the hormones are ready now if you have to release the hormone now we are we have prepared the hormones guys very good right so congratulations we have prepared the hormones now we have to release them how to release these hormones so now what is going to happen this follicle cell is going to eat it is going to eat how will it eat it will form pseudopodia it will form pseudopodia you can see here pseudopodia are coming from the cell membrane and it is going to pick up this molecule and this thyroglobulin molecule with all the iodination and coupling is going to come here and it is going to be inside this okay what is this this is a colloid droplet so now what happens a lot of lysozymes are released into this colloid droplet and this thyroglobulin is going to be cut and lot of t3 t4 dit mit all of them are released look at this not just dit mit t3 uh, t4 not just the hormones not just the hormones guys even dit mit is get released okay these have not got coupled right if they got coupled then it is t3 t4 they are released into the blood t4 is made a lot actually so the hormones are released so other things dit mit continue to form the next thyroglobulin okay so basically this action of release of hormone will happen only if tsh is released by the anterior pituitary is it clear this is the thyroid stimulating hormone if this thyroid stimulating hormone is there then only it is going to release this thyroid hormone so guys we have we are done with the preparation of the thyroid hormone and also the release of the thyroid hormone now what happens to the thyroid hormone what happens to t3 and t4 right actually a lot of t4 is made and very little t3 is made because t4 has longer half life and it has longer duration of action but t4 is less potent it is made a lot but it is less potent actually t3 is very very potent and actually the final thing that works is t3 look at this finally when uh, in every cell in the body will react to this okay so what happens uh, t3 t4 they enter the cell and t4 gets converted to t3 finally what enters the nucleus is just t3 now t3 binds with the nuclear receptor and from here starts the metabolism the action protein synthesis etc so did you understand guys so basically who and all enter the cytoplasm t3 and t4 enter the cytoplasm the t4 gets converted to t3 and only t3 enters the nucleus t3 with the nuclear receptor it is now activated the cell starts going into high metabolism this is the peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 guys did you understand so we are done with the synthesis of uh, thyroid hormone we have also looked at the regulation and the peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 so just take a recap of this video guys so we wanted to look at the steps in the thyroid hormone preparation and release so basically we have seen the regulation in the steps what it all did you see in the steps basically iodide trapping happens nis uh, that is sodium iodide uh, symporter using active transport penrin to transfer it from the follicle cell into the follicular lumen also the thyroglobulin is manufactured by the cell and released into the follicular lumen in the follicular lumen the thyroglobulin gets um, iodinated then there is coupling and now what happens it uh, through through endocytosis 
the follicular cell picks up this uh, thyroglobulin molecule inside a colloid droplet. Here the transporter is megalin. You can see this. Just like how you have pendrin here, you have megalin here. Now, uh, with, this, with the help of megalin, the, because of the pseudopodia, endocytosis happens and this thyroglobulin is there inside this colloidal drop, colloid droplet. Now, lysosomes are released into this colloid, colloid droplet and this thyroglobulin molecule is cut, okay, it is lysed. And any T3 and T4 gets released into the lumen and DIT, MIT, etc. They go back into the thyroglobulin synthesis. So this is the synthesis and release of the thyroid hormone. What else is there? The peripheral conversion of uh, T4 to T3. That also we saw. So peripherally T4 is actually converted to T3. T3 is the one that is going to bring about the action. T3 is more potent. Okay. So guys, uh, we will uh, meet you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye-bye.